my boy Bublik. My boy Bublik takes down Rublev, who I love. I love Rublev. Uh, I got his autograph or whatnot. He beats him 6-3, 3-6, 6-3 in the Halle crown. He wins his first 500 ATP title. Good for him. Everyone, kind of like Kyrgios, everyone knows that Bublik is super talented. He's one of the best players, just talent-wise, on the tour. But his mental is not there, his mentality. He's not always focused. He he likes to uh, sometimes entertain the crowd too much. Like, instead of playing a point, right, he wants to do the spectacular. He wants to, you know, uh, do some crazy shot or, you know, maybe do a drop shot when it's not warranted. Uh, go for a tweener. Hit it even with the, with the handle of the racket. He does some crazy stuff. Um, he's even said in 2020 that he only plays tennis uh, just for the money, which I do believe him. Like uh, leading up to this, I'm like, yeah, homie's talented. Homie, homie could play on a, on a given day. He could beat a lot of people, especially on grass. But it, it did feel like he's just here for the money. But now he has a family. Like you can see his family after the title. He has a little kid. He has a wife, I believe. And man, he he really buckled down and took the Holly tournament pretty pretty uh, seriously and if he does that for Wimbledon he should be ranked now he should be seated uh top 32 uh seed in Wimbledon so we'll see how he goes uh there's this crazy stat that like the only non-federer wins uh winners for the Holly Crown have lost in the first round at Wimbledon hopefully Bublik could uh gets a favorable favorable draw and he's able to go a little deeper into Wimbledon but nevertheless like, if this is all Bublik wins, I'm glad I was able to see it. Even, although it was against my boy Rublev, but Bublik is is a talented guy. And he does look like he's a, he's a nice guy. Like, I, I've seen him um, at the net after matches. And for the most part, he has, like, really good, genuine embraces with other players. Like, he always congratulates them and gives them a, a warm smile. So I, I, do, I do think Bublik is a nice guy. And I, I would like to see him go far in Wimbledon. And if he plays anything like how he did uh this week where he he was crowned a holiday champion like he he could potentially be one of those guys that you know bust a bracket or unexpected guys that you're like whoa he's he's in the quarterfinals and he's making a push uh, but yeah congratulations to Bublik. i think he deserves it um like i said one of the most talented players on tour um similar to curios doesn't probably doesn't have as many outrages as curios but in the same mold that super talented uh you could see it the eye test doesn't lie you see them hit the ball you see how um they move you see the things they could do with the racket on their hand and you're like okay like this guy's talented and then you see some of the dumb stuff they do and you're like okay this guy's never gonna win anything but thankfully for this week at least Bublik was able to get it together had a great week um had pretty pretty stiff competition on the way to to his first uh grass title but Shout out to Bublik. I'm proud of you. I'm happy for you. And, you know, keep it going. Keep it going. Let's see how far you can go at Wimbledon. And speaking of first grass titles, Carlos Alcaraz defeats Alex Deminar in a pretty comfortable final, 6-4, 6-4. It never looked like it was going to go the distance. It never looked like, looked like it was going to go for three sets. And that says a lot about Alcaraz. Like, he played a great match. Um, he even looked, I thought Corda had a chance in the semifinal. I like Corda. A lot of people call him the most talented American, even above Tiafo, even above uh, Taylor Fritz, uh, even Tommy Paul. Like Corda, Corda looks the most uh, fluid probably on court. He a lot of times his game looks really good. So I thought he could give Alcaraz trouble in the semis. That was not the case. He beat him six three six four. So Alcaraz during this tournament he was like yeah the, during the Queens Club uh, Championships. He was like, yeah, you know, the favorite or like the one that's probably going to compete against uh, Djokovic at Wimbledon, um, the hardest or whoever has the biggest chance. It's probably Nick Kyrgios. And he's trying to deflect. He's been trying to deflect. But throughout the week, he kind of he's kind of been gaining some confidence. He's like, OK, you know, uh, I, I'm kinda, I, I don't remember the exact quotes, but he's basically saying like, hey, I'm not that bad at grass. You know, like it's this is a good week. Like. Um, I didn't expect this from my from myself in grass, and he got it done. Um, he did beat a very informed Dimitrov. Dimitrov was having a good week. Uh, like I said, he beat an informed Korda. He beat uh, informed Deminar. Like he he had a, some stiff competition at the Queens Club, and you know 
going into the Queens Club, I thought maybe maybe my boy Andy Murray could make a run after winning two challengers. That was not the case. He lost in the first round. So, it, you know, it's not always easy to, to you know, buckle down for a week. A Queens, Queens Club Championship. So can Alcaraz buckle down for two weeks and win Wimbledon in, in just one week's time? Maybe we'll see. Like I said, I think I think he's the he's the one that um, has the best chance against Djokovic. He did regain his number one position at the ATP rankings, so he will be going into Wimbledon as the number one player in the world, which is important. We'll see if he gets a, a better draw. He basically um, guarantees that he he most likely won't see Djokovic till the final if they meet up with each other. So we'll see if Alcaraz could do it. I think he could do it. I think he could win it. But um, I do think Djokovic is the favorite, favorite against the field. Like, he's won so many in a row. He's in good form. He looks like he's having the time of his life. He's, uh, after the French Open, he's kind of just been recovering, enjoying his life with his wife. He's posted a couple pictures where they're just, like, in a swing, just enjoying life. I think his birthday just passed, too. He turned he turned 37 or 36. He's like, 37 never looked better. Like, Djokovic looking good. Um, I think I think he's he should be the favorite going into Wimbledon, but I, I like what I saw from Carlos Alcaraz in the Queens Club. Like I said, I thought Corda was gonna give him trouble. I thought that was gonna go the distance, and it didn't. Um, Alcaraz complete and Corda broke Alcaraz to start the the first set. Like, and Alcaraz unwavered, broken back right away, and then took care of that set six three. Gives you the, the the type of mentality that Alcaraz has at the moment. So, yeah, good week for Alcaraz. Got his feet wet in the grass. Got his first grass title. Um, I think he even surprised himself a little bit. I think now he has probably bigger expectations going into Wimbledon. And, like I said, it's the field against Djokovic. And Carlos Alcaraz is definitely leading the, the field side. And hopefully, you know, he's able to have a good showing at Wimbledon.